Things get a bloody, intense equalizing in The Equalizer 2, and we discuss if three identical twins matches up to the hype here on The Real Review. So stay tuned. Welcome to The Real Review. Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. Everybody, I am here with Joel the Con Cunningham. It's pretty good. I guess, yeah, I guess, because I just came back from SDCC. I've still got, we call it Con Brain. Con Brain? Yeah, it's kind of like when you first come back, you're just... It takes you a day or two to just get back in the swing of things. Yeah. It's like, I would imagine it being like an extreme version of coming back from any vacation. Yeah. It's hard to explain though, because you can't really get it in any other type of vacation I've ever taken, just because there's so much craziness with SDCC, but it's also like awesome and fun, and it's like you're deprived of sleep, but you're glad right. you are, because it's good reasons. And that's uh, so. San Diego Comic-Con, exactly. and not uh, Convict. Right, that's true. Okay. Uh, and it's also, I would say, because you don't get that really at any other con that I've been to. Maybe that maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Let me know. Send me a comment. See, email us. But like the only convention that I've ever been to where it's just like uber chaos, fun, craziness, awesome, and it's not like drug-related or something, <laughs> uh, is the San Diego Comic-Con. You know what I mean? Not that I go to a lot of drug-related cons. How do you feel like about that, Con Air? But... Con Air. I don't like it. Okay. No, it's all right. Yeah, it's not a bad one. So Put the bunny back in the box. Put the, the box. bunny back in the box. <laughs> yeah. So and I am here with Matt Looks Like Nobody Else. Hey. <laughs> That's me, guys. It's a compliment. It should be a compliment, but yeah, based upon the Because I'm not a see. twin or a triplet. Correct. And that you know of. That I know of, exactly. That's actually brought up in the... Yeah, I'm not going to... Yeah. Yeah, I believe we'll my there. parents, though. I, I know you do. Okay. And I should you should believe your parents, kids that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Trust them when they say that you're not a twin. Yeah. yeah okay. So I'm all about that. Yeah. But yeah, that's one of the films we're going to be talking cool. about. So, But uh, did you want any more SDCC stuff? I do want to get into that. First, I kind of want to um, intro the rest of the show. Sure. Let's just do it that way. Because do I think, do it. Do I think for the people tuning in for the first time, you like to hear kind of how this breaks down, what we're all about here on The Real Review. We have Joel and I, we kind of have a not necessarily opposing, but very different ways that we look at it. Um, movies, film, that kind of thing in general. I'm very optimistic, easygoing. If it moves me emotionally, I overlook some things. I'm not into the details too much. I can be in there sometimes, but that's more of Joel's side of things. He's yep. a little bit more nitpicky, uh, maybe pessimistic, maybe mm -hmm. negative. Yeah. Uh, but he, he can get into the details and, and really kind of get into the minutia of things. The turtle times. and the hair. I like sure. the minutia. That was great. Sure, sure. Minutia. And... Um, we kind of combine those together, give you more of a perspective on, on the film from a couple of different angles. So you have that from a couple of different angles. I'm sure Joel, people who like Joel's perspective are like, yay. And then whenever I talk, they're like, come on, man, get your act together. And then, yeah. you know, vice versa, with people who sympathize with my side more. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, um, that's how it works. Joel, will you uh, kind of break down some uh, ways people can get connected with us? Absolutely. So as mentioned, we have emails, which I'm going to start with that one uh, for some reason. Uh, Real Review Media at Gmail. Com. We'd love to hear from you. Thoughts, perspectives, input. Uh, maybe you went to SDCC. Let me know what you thought, how you had a good time, or were not able to do half of the things that you wanted, like me. Mm. Um, we also have our website, which is realreviewmedia.com. Yep. We can get connected with you on that. We also have Facebook, which is facebook.com slash realreviewmedia, and then Instagram and Twitter, which are both at realreviewmedia. We'd love to get connected with you on any of those platforms. Definitely, definitely connect. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And so, we got the U-Tubs. Yeah, the U-Tubs, exactly. I, Joel, am very mm -hmm. curious because I think this is the first thing that we're going to start with. Yeah. Some of the highs and lows of SDCC this year. Yes. Uh, 2018 version. Um, no Marvel, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and yeah, there was. it was actually, I didn't want to hear what your thoughts, what your question was, but it was a really weird con this year for mm -hmm. specifically the panels. Yeah. Because usually, I will say, we've got the the panels have gotten so crazy, and people have wanted to see them so much that people have now gotten to the point where they're camping out two days in advance. It's crazy to get to some of these panels. This year, people did camp out two days in advance, but I was able to any panel I wanted to get to, kind of walk up the night before and just hop in uh, to get a wristband, which you need to get a wristband generally to. And, ah. the, and the last day, I didn't even need to get a wristband; I just walked in for the Legion panel. Oh, okay. Um, so it was kind of an off year in regards to the actual 
things they had going on. Yeah. I think, I think the most highly sought after panel was DC, yeah. which is the Warner Brothers panel that happened um, on Saturday morning. But again, even that one the night before, I walked into line at like 11.15 and got a bracelet for the next day and then yeah. got in line at 6 o'clock in the morning and, and walked in. That's cool. Yeah. Let's do that. How about some highs? What were some of your... Uh... Well, one of the big highs, they had scooters this year, which was great. Scooters. Yes. I don't know if anybody's been to the Gaslight District. Like a Razor um, scooter. One of the issues I always have is like you'll be in line for something and then you have an event that is like all the way on the other side of the gas lamp. Okay. And you generally either have to like just foot it or try and get one of the um, like... Um, Golf the carts car. or something? No, they had like the guys on the bikes and you can hop in the cart in the back. And oh, okay, it, yeah, yeah. But those cost money yeah. and there's always people in the way. This year, and they've added them all around the San Diego area downtown, um, they have scooters that you can use your phone and activate and it, it's like a buck to activate and then like 15 cents a, mi- a minute. Yeah. And well, they're, they're motorized. Oh, they're motorized. Yeah. Oh, and so you're like weaving in okay. and out. And there was like two or three times where those were just absolutely essential. Wow. I was like at a party for Funimation um, at this bar place um, where they were doing all these handouts. And then I had to go down and get in line. And I just hopped on a scooter. And I was like, Whoa. does it cost money? It does. Did yeah. they? I, I bet they made a killing. Oh, I'm sure they did. Yeah. yeah them and Pokemon Go were like the hit. Really? Which was crazy because okay. I didn't even know people were still playing Pokemon Go. But <laughs> uh, that was a high. It went, I guess that's sad to say that a highlight for me was scooters, but they were amazing. Uh, and it saved me a lot of headache and and foot pain. Um, but nice. as far as panels go, I think my probably the top panels were actually probably Aquaman. Okay, was cool. a really awesome panel. They just did a a really great job of presenting it. They showed new footage. I heard the showmanship was really cool. Yeah, the showmanship was great. I so this wasn't the host's problem or the moderator. Aisha Tyler was moderating for Warner Brothers and DC. Sure. And the questions she was actually asking were really stupid, and <laughs> okay. bland and flat. But I, she said a couple times, like, I didn't write these questions. I don't think, I think they were probably written by, like, execs at Warner Brothers that were like, well, these are the kind of questions that would be great for a panel in Hall H. Right. She's much more familiar with, like, wanting what people want to hear. And so they were all softball questions of, like, when you were on set, what was the favorite, your favorite thing? And it was just like, and the answers from the panels were just like, I don't know. Yeah. So the more interesting <laughs> questions usually came, and it's not usually because they're great questions but uh-huh. they're just so absurd and crazy sometimes from the Q&As right. where they have audience attendees ask questions and so um so it was good. I really enjoyed it. they showed some they showed the the trailer yeah. for Aquaman and then they showed some sneak preview additional trailer footage right which is not in the public. Right which yet. you don't get to see yet and there was some really cool stuff there. So I heard the so I saw the trailer. I thought the trailer was was cool. Yeah. Not as great as I was thinking, but I keep hearing that the additional footage has really pushed it over the edge. It's, yeah. It's some really cool territory. Absolutely. Visually, it looks like it's going to be an awesome film yeah. to watch. There's some weirdness right now with me and, I hate to say it, but Jason Momoa. Okay. There's a couple times in the trailer specifically with his dialogue where it comes across as almost goofy. Okay. And I don't know if that's what they're going he, for he, or if that's just the tone of the still, trailer. It still seem to have that like kind of bro surfer like yeah i'm fine with the bro surfer and like the serious somber and like in um justice league he was actually one of my favorite characters in justice league like he was the most fun and interesting and he kind of was the most divergent from everybody who seemed to be very serious right (laughs) um but there was just a couple elements in the trailer dialogue and like he lands in the there's a scene where he like breaks into one of the submarines that's submerging and he's yeah. like, permission to come aboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, come on. Like, you that's know, like, like 90s action movie. Right. <laughs> and I'm just like, come on, you know. But I did get a chance to, to high five Jason Momoa. I saw your which pictures. Was super man. awesome. It was a very aggressive high five. Did you high five totally Nicole Kidman? No, I did not know oh, high okay. five Nicole Kidman. She kind of looked like she was stunned into silence. That photo yeah. that you posted of her, mm-hmm. she looked like. She looks haunting. She looks of. haunting, yeah. I think, in the photo. Mm-hmm. Some f- frozen features there. But anyway, she. <laughs> She had mentioned in her panel because uh, she's the she's Aquaman's mom mm-hmm. in the in the film, but she mentioned it was her first time in Hall H, and I don't think that she had ever experienced anything related to Comic Con. I don't think she knew what she was in for. Yeah, and so when she was walking down the floor, you know, because they they did the panel and then they went, and I just happened it was just circumstantial that I happened to be there with them leaving, and I got the high five. I just saw the line. You, you you learn these things. This was like my seventh SDCC. Sure. And so I was like, I saw the handler put up the sign saying that like the security is going to be forming a line and I just placed myself right there. Okay. So I knew the line would form around me. Around me. And uh, so I was right in the front. Do the high five. That's awesome. Um, but when she walked by, like I could tell she was like, I don't know what is happening. Because yeah. everybody's like, oh <laughs> my awesome. gosh. It's like a freak out thing. That's awesome. Yeah. So that, that was probably my highlight. Um, Godzilla looked pretty good. Yeah. It definitely looks like they're going for a different tone, sure. um, slightly, and a different feel with the film. Um, 
Grin, Grindwald or the Crimes Harry, of Grindelwald. Crimes of Grindelwald. Yeah, fantastic piece. The trailer looked really good. The mm-hmm. panel kind of stunk, and there was that awkward moment with Johnny Depp. Oh, for real? Uh, yeah, he he kind of because he, he came out and he was like dressed like his character, but he was speaking like Johnny Depp. Oh, and really? So I was like, is this Johnny Depp or is this the character? <laughs> I forgot the same little, character. Or the something. best moment that that's ever happened at SDCC, and we'll wrap up here so we can get into the actual film talk. Yeah. But um. There was a Loki moment during one of the Marvel yep. panels early on, and Loki came out in character. Yep. And it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. like, you plebeian minions, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. worship me. And then he would kind of like <laughs> smirk a little bit, so you knew he was kind of like in on it. It was right. just, it was really good stuff. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so. Was there a low point or anything that was like, Bleh. that was weird? Yeah, I think just all the other panels, to be really? honest. Okay. Um, I did also go to the Breaking Bad. and That's cool. I yeah. know. I, I, love, I love that. And um, Stranger, uh, yeah, Better Call Saul. Those were great. I actually asked a question during the Better Cross Hall, and I got a free uh, Los Pollos Hermanos meal yeah. with chicken and a visor. Was it good? Which was, was awesome. good chicken. It was actually really good chicken. I okay. shared it with all the people that were around me. Uh, that was a great panel. Um, Legion was not very good. Okay, bummer. I think, yeah. Um, um, I think just overall, there was just a sense of things being a little less. Yeah. Less. I HBO will... wasn't there at all. Marvel okay. wasn't there at all. Star Wars wasn't there. Right. Marvel's going to come next Star year. Star Wars but... had some of their novelization stuff like announced. That, yeah. Um, but that was it. The low point of the panels, the worst one was the Marvel games. For oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. It was just like the worst one. But I didn't go to a ton of them. But it was like, let's sit here and talk for 15 minutes about a cellular game, like a cell phone game. Okay. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. That was a little weird. Their big announcement for that panel was that like they they have a new PlayStation 4, which has the Spider-Man logo on it from right. the Spider-Man video game and, yeah. and the new costume. And I'm like, I, I, I don't care. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, do I get one? <laughs> if I get one, then I care. Yeah. But I, yeah. <laughs> do I get one? Are yeah. you giving us PlayStation? <laughs> exactly. So. Um, anyway, my my favorite trailer to come out of comic uh, Comic Con was the Shazam trailer. Oh, that was good. Which I yeah. I was not anticipating. I love Zach Levi, mm-hmm. and I didn't even know that the kid who plays Eddie from It was in it. And I was like, um, I was just so it was such a fun trailer to me. Yeah, and it just looks like. A superhero version of Big, yeah, obviously, and I don't know. It just seemed really fun. Yeah, it was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I think it if it holds into it holds true to what direction the trailer is going in, it could be another positive for the yeah. DC universe because they need some more wins right now. And I didn't now. realize that David Sandberg's directing it, who yeah. is uh, the Lights Out director, which I really like Lights right. Out. So yeah, the cool. panel was not that great just because they only had like three yeah. actors there, and it was like didn't really they couldn't right. talk about much and everything. Yeah. Um, another low, the panel itself was fun, but the Predator panel yeah. the, for the first- I heard that wasn't very good. No. Nah. The the footage looks like, it, they tried to explain it like, well, we wanted to try create new things, and, <laughs> and they literally just basically said, like, now we're going to add, and they just released the fact that they're going to have female Predators as well, but it literally just looks like they're trying to go like, well, we need just more Predator stuff, so they created like a giant super Predator. Yeah, yeah that was in the trailer, yeah. Right, and he looks BA, but at the same time, it's kind of like- it feels like you're just trying to stock it full of stuff. Right, right. Um, and they gave you, and this is the last thing I'll say, they gave you, like when you walk in, sometimes they'll yeah. give you like free items and stuff. So yeah. they gave us a Predator bag, and I was like, oh, this will be interesting. I wonder what's inside. So you'd think the Predator, it's going to be like, I don't know, fake claws or something, like right. like a face mask or something like that, just something that's a little more intimidating, like even a patch with the Predator right. on it. It was hand sanitizer. <laughs> okay. Um, a, uh, a battery charger, a portable battery charger, <laughs> okay. and a butt pad. So for like when you sit down, if you did it say <laughs> predator on it? Yeah. Okay. And so, so I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like I feel like the hand sanitizer. They were like, well, we have to put something else in here. Uh, let's just get something from the store real quick. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of what that was. Yeah, they had, and I forget the lady. She was on, I think, uh, Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. She was like a lady from. She was like works for them, and she was like talking about all the stuff that they gave you, and she's like trying to explain like, oh, isn't this great? How we gave you all these things, and I'm like, this doesn't relate <laughs> to predator at all. Like I could, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. No worries. Well, hey, I, that was your seventh one. I've been to zero SDCCs, and hopefully that can change in the future. One of these days. Sometime. Next one is their big 5-0 celebration. So. Yeah, I should. Yeah, okay. i got to try and make <laughs> it. Anyways, okay, so let's move on because we have a few movies to talk about today. Yep. Uh, the first one is the uh, anticipated sequel, which I was excited for, The Equalizer 2. Um, let me just kind of break that down real quick. And so... Uh, the simple synopsis is Robert McCall serves an unflinching justice for exploited and oppressed. But how far will he go when that when that is someone he loves? Um, again, Robert McCall is the man, the myth, the legend, Denzel Washington. Uh, but then you also have Pedro Pascal, Ashton Sanders, Orson Bean, Bill Pullman, Melissa Leo, Jonathan Scarf, uh, and uh, Sakina Jeffrey. Um, 
So let me say this. I was a little bit disappointed by this movie. Just kind of say, because I liked, I actually really liked the first one. Um, I thought the first Equalizer um, had kind of a, an old school, like, uh, filmmaking quality. And what I mean by that, it reminded me of some of the more, like, some more of the dramas from back in, like, like the 80s and 90s, where you have a lot of long takes of cityscapes, uh, kind of music behind it, kind of setting the vibe of the atmosphere of the city, like long takes following cars, where they're going, stuff like that. And I was like, oh, it's kind of a slower pace. There wasn't stuff happening every scene, you know, right. like crazy stuff. And it was nice. And it felt good. It felt like it took its time really well. And the first movie had a clear antagonist and it had a clear, like, uh, climax at the ending where they're mm-hmm. you know, battling head to head and yeah. it was really well done I really liked it and it was brutal just the way it needed to be so I had that modern sensibilities as far as action is concerned kind of that John Wick real fast uh, kinetic stuff um, the second one had some of that not nearly as much but I felt like it took way too much time in that like and what I appreciated about the first one, kind of how it took its time doing things I felt like it took way too long mm-hmm. and it's like just over two hours long I got bored. Hmm. Um, I looked at my watch a couple times. Uh, and when I say watch, I mean cell phone. But I was looking at my phone. I was like, I was like, what? I was like, man, is this over? It's like it just felt like it took forever to get going. Yeah. Um, and and it wasn't bad. Denzel did great. Um, I felt like maybe they just focused on some of the wrong things. Uh-huh. Um, I liked, and it's weird to say, but I liked. I didn't really care for the like last thirty minute like battle or whatever you want to call it i was like eh, okay mm-hmm. um and i didn't feel like the antagonist was very good hmm. um so it was just kind of like oh man i was disappointed because i was expecting it to be on par because it had basically the original team anton anton uh, fuqua back hmm. directing it um denzel obviously but denzel was great yeah he's great i don't think he could he could do wrong he's just he's he's just He's going to be legendary for yeah. all time. I, he, he's an amazing actor. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen him in anything that I was like, eh, Denzel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of phoned that one in. Yeah. Like, I think he's no matter what he is. everything. Yeah, he's got an intensity there. Um, in fact, he's in one of my, like, like favorite films. I wouldn't put it on, like, a, a list or anything, but I love, I know we talked about this before, but I love the book of Eli. Yeah, <laughs> anyways, we talked about it. Yeah, so anyways, uh, I think Denzel is just an amazing actor actor and he mm. he does no wrong in what he does and what he brings to it yeah i thought the movie was just sort of like eh, i don't know okay did it fine. feel like they came up with a realistic set of circumstances for him to like revisit the role yeah but but he he's kind of like an everyday like justice guy he doesn't need to like so a lot of the stuff that you see him do at the beginning is just like everyday justice from people that he sees that needs justice in their life right like or help or something right, he's he the equalizer him. right yeah. it doesn't need to come out of hiding like a john wick does like john wick goes because he's got a big bad guy he's got a mm-hmm. fit you know face but he's actually he's helping regular people right and even if that means like helping them stay off the streets that kind of thing and i like that part of it i like his care and concern for people and i think that's where denzel really shines in this movie mm-hmm. but um did they create some sort of like fable around him from the first movie no, no? so no. he's not like known he, in no, the, like no. the the bad areas of it's town not, for being this equalizer. No, it's not like they're building a mythology around it or okay. anything. Like, it's I, like I, like I never saw Lake. the first one. That's why I'm asking. Right. Yeah. The, so things. the the first one was rather enjoyable. I was surprised. I'd never seen it until actually, you know what, like six months ago I saw okay. it. And I really was like, man, how come I didn't see this? I like this movie. Um, the second one, I was just like, eh, it's okay. I mean, it's, it was fine. Um, hmm. It wasn't, there wasn't anything necessarily particularly bad. I felt like some of the motivations were unclear. I felt like um, again, the antagonist wasn't that good. And also, in addition to that, um, the story elements were a little... Like, I didn't understand some of it. And I'm like, hmm. normally I understand things. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I was like, wait, why is that a big deal? Like, I didn't understand... Okay, whatever. Hmm. Anyways, um, yeah, any other No, I mean, I, I haven't seen... I didn't see the first one. I didn't yeah. see this one because I didn't see the first one. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if I had to rate this thing, I'd probably get just C. 70, C. 70. Seven seventy six. Yeah. Somewhere in there. What is so? If you had to say like the best part of it, what would that be? The Denzel? action sequences. The action sequences. Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, I liked where they went with some of the slower dramatic moments where he's trying to help regular mm-hmm. everyday people. Yeah. I didn't feel like they set were set up very well, and I don't feel like they were paid off very well. Gotcha. Um. So pacing was a bit off. Yeah. Story just didn't quite do anything for you. Yeah. Too long. Yeah, it was long. I felt I felt like they could have cut fifteen minutes just out of yeah. like scenic cityscape mm-hmm. shots one of the things they really highlighted at least in the trailer that i saw for it was that it's very 
grotesquely violent in the sense it's, that it's it like, is very violent just like yeah. the first one was right. um and so that that stays true to what it is there's a scene that happens in a car an action sequence that when when the guy dies uh everybody in the theater had the same reaction like oh dang <laughs> like it was like intense <laughs> yeah i was like man that was brutal but um it was it's really well done like in a good way you okay. know um like john wick style right there's a couple moments where I don't know. Yeah, John Wick style, but uh, John Wick is like boom, 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 boom. It's like this guy, yeah. this guy, this guy, well, this guy. He very so rarely has thing. a John long Wick, fight John Wick with kills one people person. right away. Right. This this guy, he'll take his time. Like and he'll right. like if he's got a knife, it, it takes like eight slashes before you're dead. <laughs> that gotcha. kind of a thing. So he it's makes not, it count. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but or, yeah, so it's a C. I mean, I wouldn't. I didn't like the way it ended. They tried to go for this emotional pull for something that I don't feel like was set up very well, but. Mm-hmm. Do you think they left it open for a third? Oh yeah, I'm sure they could do a third. I mean, he's yeah. still, you know, he's still what, equalizing, still equalizing things. So <laughs> it's all good. But Maybe, um, yeah. yeah, that that's really it for that movie. Um, the next movie that I want to talk about sure. is something that you saw that I hadn't had a chance to see. And I seen it uh, advertised. Mm-hmm. I thought it was on Netflix for some reason, but I was mistaken. Yep. And uh, you're like, yep, you were wrong, Matt. But <laughs> I um. And uh, this movie is called Three Identical Strangers, right? Yes. Okay, so break so, it down. So, uh, synopsis for this uh, in the 1980s New York. Sorry, in 1980, <laughs> New York, uh, three young men who were all adopted meet each other and find out they're your triplets who were separated at birth. Then they discover why. What are the odds? Dun, dun, dun. That is crazy. Uh, directed by Tim Wardle. The documentary Martin. style, right? It is. Okay. Um, the story. Starring people are primarily the the brothers. Uh, you have Eddie Galand, um, uh, sorry, Robert uh, Shafron, and then David Kelman. So the three main brothers are Eddie, David, and Robert, who okay. they also refer to as Bobby over the course of the film. Um, so I went into this one mainly because I didn't want to see Mamma Mia 2, right. <laughs> <laughs> which is getting surprisingly good ratings right. on Rotten Tomatoes, and it just freaks me out. <laughs> um, but I heard a lot of positive buzz about this one as well. It's been okay. out in theaters for a little while. And so I will say, it's, you know, it's not a new release or anything like that. And I think it's a bit of a limited release. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's out there everywhere. Most documentaries are, are limited release just by the nature of how they stand to make a lot of money. Um, I went into it thinking, hearing that there's a bit of a twist to it. Yeah. And I think that kind of in a sense, spoiled it a little bit for me. Okay. I think if I had gone into it not expecting so much from it, All right. I would have been a lot more pleased with it. Um, there is a twist, and things kind of do go like topsy-turvy and go in some different directions um, with some aspects, but it felt a bit... Uh, here's what I'll say. <laughs> it was an entertaining film, okay. and I think it definitely deserves um, to even be nominated probably for like an... The it's Academy it's Award getting recognition year. for sure. Yeah, um, I think it'll be up there, and I think it'll probably run in for a couple of awards, including like you yeah, know best, best documentary, documentary of the year yeah. and everything. Um, as far as like groundbreaking, transitional, ethical input into our culture right. and society, it felt like it was kind of aiming for that at okay. times with certain aspects that really kind of revolved more around the twist, but not hitting it. But not hitting it. Okay. For me, it was interesting. Okay. And it definitely left me asking questions and it kind but to me it, it presented there's a lot of people that feel like this is a black and white film mm-hmm. and that's the thing that like if you feel it's a black and white film then the twist or whatever that's going to happen is probably going to be very shocking for sure. you um when it comes to the story being told of of them and and meeting and why and how um and there's definitely some things in there that are you know pretty emotionally hard yeah and difficult for these kids i'm doing my best to not spoil any moments <laughs> right, from the right, story right, here because right, right. i think this one it, it's better not to but it, at the same time i think when i got to the end of the film it left it it left me with more of a sense of more like i don't know what to think about that i i don't know how i feel about that i feel like i'd need more of this or need more of that to kind of really get some of the because there's really it presents a case of ethical dilemmas right of the choices that were made by people under deferring circumstances and the and you're you're not really given answers as to why everybody made certain decisions and going in certain directions um and there's a number of characters like their mother and the people that they were adopted through like the agency that they were adopted through um and some of the other stuff that comes out later that you're kind of like I, I don't really get the motivation I don't really understand their motivation might have been good or it could have been greed or it could have been 
this or it could have right. been that. And it, or not greed, but more pride or self-centeredness or not thinking of other people. Sure. And so I wish that there had been a more satisfying sort of conclusion, conclusion to okay. it. And that might just be sort of the idea that they're presenting. They left it kind of open-ended. So they, about halfway through the film, they present this sort of build-up conclusion of what different things mean okay. um, that are presented in the film. Sort halfway. of thematic elements, yeah, okay. of of the story of the twins. And then some things go on and happen. And then at the very, very like last five or ten minutes of the film, I'm not going to spoil it, but things kind of take a shift again where they present a different thematic idea and mm-hmm. concept. And But then they never really do more to fill in the gap there or they really just discuss. talk about they just present it and that's it yeah and it, without spoiling things without um tiptoeing into like some of the twists of the story sure. one of the one of the big elements that's presented one of the themes is the whole idea when we, you discuss this like if you take any intro to psych or right. whatever they talk about this nurture versus nature yeah and the idea of these three boys being separated and how that plays out in their lives because they each had distinctly different uh parents and different lifestyles even though they they were generally around each other right they were within like a thousand uh my or that's not crazy a uh, hundred mile radius of each other that's crazy yeah and so how that plays out and they they draw certain conclusions that that kind of go in different directions and you're so at the end of it i kind of left thinking like huh i'd like to know more that's interesting i don't really know what i'm supposed to take from this though as far as like is that good is that bad where did that go? How did that happen? They're going to make a sequel. <laughs> it's the Three Identical Twins Part 2. No, I don't think they're going to make a sequel to this. Three Identical Twins yeah. Square. Uh, but one of the things they do say is that there is legitimately out there some people, and I will spoil this. It's not really a spoiler, but like they say that like there's le- legitimately probably at least four or five people out there that are still walking around that have an identical twin that don't even know it. Huh. And so that's why I made the joke earlier. Yeah, well, it's that not I did. you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not hey. saying that's true. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying it, Matt, but yeah. I totally am. <laughs> well, all these all these boys, you know, Bobby and and Eddie and all them, they all knew that they were adopted. Okay. And so when they when they, the circumstance started to to happen where they realized that there was other twins, it wasn't like what the heck I'm adopted. Right. And da, da. Right. It was yeah. So I don't know. It's interesting. I think it's a it film. Interesting. Yeah. Overall, that's worth seeing. I don't know if it's worth seeing in theaters. I think you okay. can definitely get the same exact experience. I'll probably wait for Netflix, <laughs> as I thought it was on Netflix. You can get whatever. the same thing through Redbox. You can get the same thing through Netflix. There's no like really like cinematic spectacle okay. of it. It's more of just kind of a somber story that sure. makes you think, and and you're kind of left going like, hmm, that's really interesting. So, What would you rate that thing? Uh, based upon everything that I saw, I'm actually giving it uh, an 84. Okay. So it's like it's a not B. Bad. B. No. no. I, it's like I said, it's yeah. worth it's worth seeing. Um I think overall it, it's deserving of the positive buzz. It's not groundbreaking in my life. Sure. Um like a couple months from now it I'll probably change be your like, life. No. No, I probably okay. I mean I might reference it, but I'm not going to like be thinking about it yeah. consistently. You're like, you're like SDCC changed my life more. It did. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. <100%. Yeah. laughs> it always does, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I got two really cool posters from yeah, there I'm going to be hanging awesome. and looking at and going, oh. And I got a Jurassic Park patch. Yes, it's so exciting. That's what I got. Anyways. I try to take care of you, Matt. Yeah, appreciate Stick it. with me. Appreciate <laughs> it. There you go. So that's me. Yep, that's awesome. So, uh, Three Identical Twins, I will watch it on Netflix. I refuse to watch it any other way. No, I've s- good. I got to stand, stand my ground on that one. Let's talk about one more movie I got a chance to see. And it is the first purge. Mm-hmm. Um, let me break that down real quick. And hopefully the last. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first of all, this is a prequel to the other three purge movies that have been out in previous years. So just so you don't get your timelines all mixed up. But um, America's third political party, the new founding fathers of America, comes to power and conducts an experiment. No laws for 12 hours on Staten Island. No one has to stay on the island, but $5,000 is given to anyone who does. Directed by Gerard Mc. Murray and uh, written by James Mc or DeMonaco um, stars. Here we go, man. I'm going to mess up some names. Sorry about that. But it's Yulin Noel, uh, Lex Scott Davis, Joyvin uh, Wade, Mugga, uh, Patch Dara, and Marissa Tomei. Um, so this is my least favorite Purge movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been thinking about it and kind of what. Not to say that the other Purge movies are great. Let me just say that, by the way. Quality showing Quality. Right there. I actually, yeah. I think the first Purge movie is the best, in my opinion. Yeah. I liked it. Um, it's it's a contained in-house, like, a home invasion thriller, basically, with this really messed up concept. Mm-hmm. You don't get a lot of what's happening in the outside world, but I felt that was okay for that film. Ethan Hawke is in it. Um, so is Cersei. 
Mm-hmm. I can't think of her real name. Lena. I know you're talking about Lena. Yeah. Lena Hetty, Lena, right? Lena Hetty. Lena Hetty. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, so um, uh, I like that. The second two are more kind of like they're more of like kind of like the same type of movie split into two parts. Yeah, is kind of what I would imagine. It's more of an action thriller, less okay. horror yeah. suspense, but more of an action thriller. Frank Grillo's out there, you know, helping people left and right, basically, right. and it, it was fun. I, I thought they were okay. I thought they were really, really heavy and really, really heavy on the nods towards um, like today's society and stuff like that. And that's really what they've been mm-hmm. um, kind of all along. But the the two second and third one were really like that. Yeah. Um, I saw the first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Anarchy and Election Year were the two middle ones. Yeah. This one, the first purge takes place before all that, before the purge is an actual thing. Basically, they've confined it to Staten Island. Uh-huh. And... Um, so Marissa, they're basically allowing the purge to take place in one limited area. Right. It's the first one area. It's like kind of like a test. So basically the new founding fathers just came into uh, power. They just took over the presidency basically. Yeah. And this is our first thing. Marissa Tomei is a psychologist. She's like, this is going to be something that I think probably would help on paper. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, Marissa Tomei yeah. is in charge. Right. Right. Oh, right. wow. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. It's a stretch already. <laughs> so anyways, well, she's not in charge. She's just a psychologist who's working with the person in charge of gotcha. the experiment. So hot Aunt May right. is in exactly. charge of the first purge. Exactly. Wow. So. Um, in case you haven't seen that. They from started. The there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of um, build up towards it. This time. They spent a lot of time with the characters and trying mm-hmm. to get you to invest in these characters. I don't think they did a very good job because I don't care about these people for the most part. Okay. Because um, they just make really dumb decisions. Uh, one of the kids they you know, just makes really dumb decisions thinking that it's, it's going to be all good. Uh, one of them's an activist, but why? You know, I don't know why. One of them's a drug dealer and they try and like create this like love relationship thing between, but I'm like, why? There's history but i don't know anything about this so why is this a big deal i i don't know i didn't that did that part didn't work for me i'm sure it works for some people but mm-hmm. i felt like they focused a lot on that and what would have been interesting in the other the last two purge films i i thought there was too much political stuff and this one i felt like there wasn't enough i felt like they like hey we're doing this and that's really it mm-hmm. you know and you see a little bit of the psychology behind why they want to do it and why they think it might work but um, I, it would have been nice to see, like, how did you come to the conclusion that let's have a bunch of like murder parties? You know, like I, I don't, I don't understand. They didn't talk about it. They're they just didn't like, that? they're just like, they're new. They're just like, hey, the new founding fathers became, um, uh, they're in power now, and we have this idea, like, and then now, now, fast forward, we're gonna have all crime be, hmm. you know, legal for twelve hours. They didn't like. They didn't How show did, you the process of no. creating that idea. There, there wasn't a guy like in like the new founding fathers of America who was like, you know what? You know what would be a really good idea? Let's just have people, you know, get rid of their quote unquote demons and kill people and do crime stuff. You know? Yeah. Um, they didn't have that moment. So I was yeah. kind of like, well, how did you jump to that? Like, where did mm. that come from? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, um, one thing that they've done in the previous films, which is fine, is that they've definitely made a case to show that all the people in power are freaking crazy. So it sure they're just crazy people, and that was what they thought of. Yeah, um, I'll take that. But it just wasn't enjoyable, and the, the way they ended it, they didn't tie it back into the political ramifications of what some of the stuff was that they were talking earlier, and just like, hey, you know, the people that you cared about, some of them died, some of them made it out. You know, I was kind of like, so you're saying this movie lacked depth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, what? And excitement? I don't know. It wasn't even like in the last two, I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of cool. You're following yeah. your guy that, you know, he's he's kind of been around. He's trying to protect some people. He's a stand-up guy, you know, kind of a thing. Uh, I don't know. He didn't have that in this movie. Hmm. Um, I thought the acting was fine. Yeah. There wasn't any problem there. Yeah. Um, I, I thought everybody was really well. I thought uh, the person who played Dimitri and Naya, I thought they were good. And Isaiah, I thought they were all really good. Yeah. I uh, just, just like, meh, I don't know. Hmm. If... Um, if I were to rate it, I'd give it a D plus. Okay, um, kind of low. I I was just like, eh, yeah, I don't know. They didn't need to make it. There was one joke that I was like, wow, that is a joke off of today and what's happening in today. So they definitely have today's society in mind and uh-huh. government and stuff like that. I was like, wow, I can't believe they went there with this. <laughs> Anyways, they um, tiptoed into yeah. some political territory. There, yeah, that I happened guess. about halfway through the movie. I was like. Wow. Okay. They they went there and yeah. uh, and it's if, yeah. Anyways, 
So yeah, not impressed. Hmm. Uh, it's interesting. They they definitely pegged it as going into social commentary with some of like the reviews and the stuff that the commentary that they were talking about leading up to the film. Yeah. But maybe they were trying to have their cake and eat it too. So here's the like, thing: it is a social commentary, but you don't have to get that unless you want to. It was a stepping stone because the Purge TV series comes out in a couple months. Right, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, they have. I a, made the joke about the last one. Yeah, they but, have a mid credit scenes where they basically tease that there's a. Right. I think it's a ten episode uh, season of the Purge, which they don't right. say if it's gonna be the only season. It could be ongoing. I don't know. It's gonna be on USA. Here's the thing: stuff. yeah, it's gonna be on USA, and it's gonna be. Um, that's kind of how I always felt about these movies, though. I always felt like it was almost like Violent Light. Yeah, like it always felt like it could. I could see it on a network television show. Right. I will say this: so was USA after a certain time of night, they mm. they reel back on what they censor. Really? Yeah. Like yeah, FX. Yeah. Yeah. Sort yeah, of stuff. yeah exactly. Oh, gotcha. So, um, I I think it has a potential to be pretty intense still because okay. the concept was always kind of a really interesting concept. Yeah, the concept is strange and interesting. It's yeah. just the, how they get to the, it. The execution like, isn't hey. always good. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, that's that's really it. Uh, D plus, uh, 67, 68, somewhere in there. How likely are you to try and check out the show? I'll probably check it out. Okay. I mean, I got to catch up on years worth of other TV. Walking but Dead. Walking yeah. Dead, some bunch yeah. of other stuff. But um, okay. yeah, anything else? Insights? Mm, no. No? Okay, no. cool. Haven't seen it. Probably won't. Yep, it's all good. <laughs> well, that's going to wrap it up for today's show, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, real quick, you can get connected with us on uh, all social media, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, um, at Real Review Media. Uh, our website, uh, realreviewmedia.com, realreviewmedia at gmail.com. If you want to drop us a line, send us a show that you're excited about, or if you liked any of the movies that maybe we didn't like, <laughs> let us know. Or if, mm-hmm. or if you're a, a twin and don't know that you have another twin, email us. Let us know. Are you? Are you a twin or a triplet? <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's all we got for the show today. Uh, anything else you want to add? Nope. Think we're good. All right. Well, it's been real. It's been real. <laughs>